In this video, I'm going to show you how to plan two exposures. Here you have one of those two exposures I did at Bracelet Bay in South Wales. It was a long exposure shoot and I was using my Lee 0.6 Heart and a Lee 0.6 Soft Grad to keep the sky a little darker against the foreground so I get an even exposure and this worked quite well but overall the image got a bit too dark you can see this here in the histogram most of the detail is to the left and this is not ideal especially for further post-processing but i'm going to work on contrast i want more information and have a little more reserves in the dark parts of the image this way I did a second exposure, which I'm showing you here, the bright one. And with this exposure, I have a lot of detail in the foreground and around here and the hills. But I also lost some information in the sky. Around here, the pixels are pure white. And this is also not ideal. So what to do? Uh, best thing would be to have the parts in the sky around here from the dark exposure and the rest of the image from the bright one. And I'm now going to show you how to blend those two images. First thing to do is I'm going to put a dark, a black mask on the dark exposure. I'm going this way because in the end I'm using most part of the bright exposure and it's just easier to mask in the specific parts in the sky from the dark exposure. It's just uh, less work to do. The next thing is to create some helpers I'm going to use throughout the blending. And those helpers are luminance masks. For those luminous mask creation, I recommend you check out the tutorial sites by Tony Kuiper. It's some really good tutorials about how to create luminance masks, about how to use them. And you can even purchase some Photoshop actions from Tony where you can create these masks with just one click. And that's what I'm doing in the next step. I've his, I've got his Photoshop actions loaded into Photoshop, and if you have done so, also you'll find the TK Luminance Masks folder. And I usually start by creating all the masks, which will give me a complete set from brightness masks over dark masks to the midtone masks and it's good to have those masks complete in the beginning so we can take a look through them and later decide how we're gonna use them in the blending so that's what we'll do first take a look at the masks we have light masks the bright lights super lights which is gonna just select those parts in the sky which are nearly white and here are the dark darks for example or the shadow darks which select the dark pixels in the image for example the area in the hills here so back to the image and time to decide how to start with the blending. Usually there's no concrete recipe on how to do the blending. It's always depending on your source material. But I'm just gonna try to start by blending in those bright areas using a 
lights mask. So let's take a look here at, for example, the bright lights or the super lights, which create a quite good selection of those areas in the sky. I want to mask in from the dark. And I'm going to start off with the bright lights because I have a little feathering here and a little gradient. And in the end, this might give me a better blending. So first try, select the bright, bright lights, hitting Control and mouse click here. And to add those marching lines, Control H. And now it's important to select the mask. When I select a brush using like 50% opacity for a start. And then I'm going to paint in the area here in the sky. Oh, I have to switch to white first. Okay, now I'm going to paint in the areas. You see how I'm painting through the mask and how the dark parts are revealed for those bright pixels here. By now hitting Ctrl Shift F, I can bring up a fade dialog which gives me control over the last painting I did with 49% opacity. I can now adjust it and see what happens if I've done this painting with less, for example 20. And look how those uh, opacity in the sky changes, or if I increase it to around 90, how harsh the blending is going to be. So this is not the way to go. So let's try something around 30. And now take a closer look what we got here. What we got is a shadow in the sky, which doesn't look natural at all. The problem here is that we have moving clouds in the picture. If we deactivate the mask, you can better see that those clouds we have here are completely gone in the bright exposure they had moved on. And if you want to blend to exposures where you have moving subjects, you're gonna need another approach. With those moving subjects, for example, also a ship here, you have to work with 100% blendings to get in details completely from one exposure. So I'm gonna try another approach here. I'm gonna clear the mask again. First I have to deselect. And now I'm gonna use a brush again, but this time I'm drawing with 100% opacity and I'm drawing without a mask. I'm just trying to roughly draw around the areas in the sky I want to have from the dark exposure. The beginning, this is not such a good selection. And you see, it's far from the end result I'm after. But we're going to remedy this in the next step by using masks again, but not the bright masks. This time, we're going to use the dark masks to recover black areas or dark areas around the hills here. So it's kind of a reverse approach to the first try we did. So let's take a look at the masks again and see if we're gonna find a selection which will help us recover those areas here. I'm gonna go to the channels again and take a look at the dark darks. Well, those are selecting the dark pixels here, but they are also selecting some clouds around, and this is not going to do it. So we move on to the shadow darks and see what they do. Yeah, 
this looks better because the hills are selected or would be selected but the areas in the sky around here are nearly black and would be selected so we're going to start by selecting the shadow darks with control clicking and again we're going to hit the mask layer here which is important as we're going to try on the image uh, draw on the image and with control h we're going to hide the marching ants because they're too distracting and this time we're going to select a dark brush 100 percent opacity and now we're drawing through the dark docks uh, now the shadow docks mask and recovering dark areas here and you see how the hills already begin to brighten might have to go over this area a few times and i'm going to show you how this looks in the mask and how we're not painting into the sky the mask keeps us from doing so so now another look yeah this already looks better than before now we're not losing as much detail in the hills as we did before um, but we can further improve this selection here let's take a look at the mask again you can go there by alt clicking on the mask by the way and we now have drawn a bit through the shadow docks but we could get a little bit better defined edges here and for this we are using the dodge and burn tool and I have to excuse the German version I got here but I'm gonna translate I'm selecting the yeah how it's called the burn tool and set it to the darks with 10% and now I'm gonna draw in the mask from the dark areas direction of the edge and you have to go over this a few times to see how the dark pixels extend towards the edge and how you're getting quite a nice defined selection or edge here you can get a little closer see what we're doing I could now spend some more time here drawing and refining the edge but I think you already got quite an idea of how this works so I'm gonna stop here and show you another technique I'm using to improve the, improve the blending for example if we look at the blending here we see that the dark exposure is a little too dark the blending is a little abrupt or it doesn't look natural that's why I sometimes use a, a curves layer and by using alt click between the curves and the dark layer I combine them and now I brighten up the dark exposure a bit until the transition here looks more even in case of exposure like this then I'm using a dark brush with 10% or something similar and draw on the mask of the curves layer to recover a bit of the bright areas here and I might also come back to the original mask on the darks layer and draw with a black brush and like 20% around here to recover a bit because it was kind of too dark there so I'm trying to get a more even transition which looks a little more natural and this is what I'm gonna do for the other parts go in and recover some areas use the mask 
to refine the edges use dodge and burn to refine the edges um, this usually takes between 10 minutes or 30 minutes so now I'm showing you the final result I've prepared it here in a separate uh, directory and you see what I've done this is before only the bright exposure and this is after the blending I did and now we take a quick look over the different steps for example let's take a look at the final mask you see the edge here it's very good defined sharp edge we have a transition here in the sky we have a hundred percent white here where the bright parts were so we're getting complete details from the dark exposure here and here around the water we have a transition again this bright part here is around the ship as we see here and since uh, we have some gradient going on here we need to draw 100% around the ship as we would have just a masking of around like 50% and since the ship was moving this would lead to some blurry effects and we don't want this um, this way I went drawing with 100% just around the ship and with the ship I had another um, mask another curves layer which was just brightening the ship a bit let's take a look what it did without it now because of drawing 100% in this area was a bit too dark and so I attached another curves layer for the ship brightening it further in the end this gives me a very clean and natural looking landing